Okay, today we're going to do more mini proofs, but we're going to call it day two. We're going to use some different definitions and theorems. All right. Number one, uh, we want to prove the triangle ABC is congruent to triangle BDC. So let's do that by going back up and looking at the givens. First given, DA is congruent to DB. We can simply mark that in the diagram. Next step, here's something new. We have perpendicular lines. What do perpendicular lines give you? They give you the right angle. So I'm going to put the right angles in the diagram, but we have to write it out in our proof as well. And uh, I'm going to put use numbers for it, make it a little bit easier instead of uh, saying, you know, let's say angle CDA and CDB, we're going to use 1 and 2. Okay, so first you actually have to state that you have right angles. So we'll say angle 1 and angle 2 are right angles. Now, where did we get that from? How do we know that? Well, we knew it from the given, right? Step 2 told us that we had perpendicular lines. And the definition of perpendicular lines is that you get right angles. All right, next. Well, that's great, but we need congruent parts. We need three congruent parts to prove our triangles are congruent. So how can we get this? Well, we can say now that, hey, if angles 1 and 2 are both right angles, they're both 90 degrees, that means they're congruent to each other. So angle 1 is congruent to angle 2, the same angles we set are right angles. And when you write it out, this is kind of a sentence you're going to, after a while, memorize. You're going to write it out so many times. We say all right angles are congruent, right? They're all 90, they've got to be congruent to each other. So all right angles are congruent. So these two steps you're going to write out every time you have perpendicular lines. And we still might need one more congruent part. We've used up our givens, but if you look in the diagram, hopefully you remember that if two triangles share a common side, we can use that for reflexive property. So I put an X in the diagram. It's for side CD they share. So CD is congruent to CD by the reflexive property. And then the last step is trying to prove why the two triangles are congruent. Well, look at one triangle, go around in order. We have side, angle, side. Look at your markings, side, angle, side. Always important to mark everything in the diagram, otherwise you wouldn't know which of the five methods it is. Okay, so we have to do two more together here just to do all the different types of proofs you're going to see. Oh, got to go back, got to go back. I forgot that little question in the corner here. Use the properties of rigid motions to explain why the two triangles are congruent. Well, it has to be a reflection. That's the only way you're going to get AD on top of BD and so on. So we know that, A, reflections preserve two things, and those two things are then causing our triangles to be congruent. Reflections preserve distance and angle measure. And that is why the triangles are congruent. The distance didn't change, the angles didn't change, so if we put the triangles on top of each other, they'd be exactly the same. Distance and angle measure, if I can even fit it in here. Okay. All right, number two. Uh, we want to prove triangle ADB is congruent to triangle CBD. So let's look at the first given and mark it in. We have angle DAB congruent to angle BCD. Okay, we've got it marked in. Given two, this is the new part. AD is parallel to CB. I'm going to put the arrows. Whenever you have parallel lines, you're going to get either corresponding, alternate interior, or same side interior angles. Well, if AD is parallel to CB, we can get these corner angles to be congruent to each other. I'm going to have to put two markings because I already have single markings from that other given. And these corner angles here, those are alternate interior angles. They're inside the parallel lines, and they're on alternate sides of this transversal, DV as being the transversal. Notice that the angles I just marked in touch our parallel sides, right? They have to touch it. Okay, so they both do. So I'm going to call those angles 1 and 2 just to make it a little bit easier. You can use three letters if you want when you're writing it out, or you can just do 1 and 2. Angle 1 is congruent to angle 2, and then you state what type of angles those are. Those were alternate interior angles. So alternate interior angles theorem. You state whichever type of angles they are. Again, you might get a corresponding. Same side interior, eh, not so much because those aren't equal to the, each other. Those add up to 180. So usually you don't see something like that because you have to be a little bit more involved. But remember, you have to have parallel lines. Sometimes they look parallel. You can't do this unless it says it's parallel in the given. Step four, we need one more congruent part. Well, guess what? They both share a common side. They share DB. 
So we're going to say DB is congruent to DB, reflexive property. And we'll have our three congruent parts. Then we can prove the triangles are congruent. And you have to make sure when you prove the triangles are congruent, you're looking at congruent parts, not parallel. Sometimes people look at the parallel. No, that's not helping you out here. So I'm going to even, if I could do this kind of gently here. I'm, a, I'm erasing the arrows so you guys don't look at that when you uh, figure out why the triangles are congruent. I'm going to look at triangle ADB here. Go around in a circle. Remember, if I start at angle A, I have to go around this way because I can only skip one thing. So it's angle, skip, angle, side. A, A, S. You'd get something totally different if you used the parallel. So always look at congruent parts. Okay, we have one more we have to do together here. Uh, before we do that, I almost missed it again. Even when I teach this in class, I almost always miss that little <laughs> um, note that I have. We have to, still in number two, describe the rigid motion. Well, um, because of how everything's labeled, it's going to have to be a rotation here, rotation of 180. But the point, maybe not as easy for people to see, what are we rotating about? Okay, so rotation of 180. You have to imagine, hey, where am I going to put my pencil tip? So if I had it traced out using tracing paper, where, where's the pencil tip going? And I can rotate triangle ADB and get on top of the other one. Well, if you don't know where it is, I'm going to show you. It would be right in the middle of DB. It would be right here. Well, what's that point in the middle called? It's called the midpoint. So it's a rotation of 180 about, I don't know much room here, about the midpoint of DB. It's about the midpoint of DB. Okay. Now we have one more left that we're going to do together. Step five, we want to prove the triangle ADB is congruent to CDB. So the first given angle ABD, step one, congruent to CBD. I'm going to mark that in. Right now I can tell it has to be a reflection. Okay, second given, DB. Hey, we have another bisector, but this time it says to bisect angle ADC. So we're cutting an angle in half. Go to angle ADC. Okay, cut it in half. And you're going to get two congruent angles. I'm going to have to do double markings because I already have single markings. Now I have to write that out. And again, if you want to use numbers, use numbers for angles. Makes it a lot easier just because there's so much writing in proofs. So we can ang say angle one is congruent to angle two. And we know that from the second given, which was a bisector. So it's the definition of a bisector. And we need one more congruent part. We're done with our givens. And yet again, they sh the two triangles share a side. So I'm going to put a X on side DB. That's their common side. And we're going to say DB is congruent to DB by the reflexive property. Okay. Once we get more involved with proofs, there's going to be a lot of different ways to do them. We're still at the part where... Hey, all the ones on this sheet, there's only one way to do them. All right, why are the triangles congruent? Look at one triangle, look at the top one, look at the markings. Angle, side, angle. A, S, A. Go right around in a circle, only skipping one thing, although on this one doesn't skip anything. A, S, A. 